sure I've got good signal. Give it a couple seconds. Unscheduled live stream. Thank you for the thumbs up, whoever threw that. Real quick on this one. Let me put my headset in. Let me put my headset. Well, we'll do it this way. You new CDL 18 wheel big rig truck drivers that are coming out here to run. You've got to have a voice. You've got to have a voice. I've said from the beginning of my channel, you need to be a polite honey badger. Polite, professional, always. But be relentless on getting what you need. Relentless. Two coaching calls in the last couple uh, days. Two stories. First story. Um, gentleman gets into trucking. He's been with the company now about six months. They're giving him a lot of short runs. And it's zip code to zip code miles. So he's getting... You know, three or four, three, two or three live loads and unloads a day within a certain area. He's not getting his miles. Even staying out for seven days, he's not getting his miles. Um, he's making the company a lot of money, but he's not making any money. Now, he has a retirement income coming in, so he has a little bit more cushion than the average bear. But still, he's out here the same amount of hours anybody else that's in the truck is out here. And he's not getting the miles. He's doing 15, 16, 1700 miles a week. That's all he's getting. But he's working. He's running out his, his 10, 12, you know, 14 hour clock every day just to make all these live loads and unloads, zip code to zip code, not getting paid for all the miles. All the things, and I, I, know, I know very few companies, after the video's over, if you have companies that are brand new companies for brand new drivers, I should say that offer practical miles, please put them in the comments. I only know of one, I'm not gonna say who it is, I only know of one that offers offers practical miles from the, from the jump. Every other company I know that's a starter company is zip code to zip code or household goods miles. That'll wear you out, it'll wear you out. You're out here doing the exact same job somebody else. Now I understand there's an apprentice phase. I understand there's a phase when you come out here to, be, to drive an 18 wheeler, there's a learning phase. The company wants to see if you can run right. They want to see if you can hustle. They want to see if you can handle your business, handle your paperwork, handle your picks and drops. Uh, just handle your clock. They want to see that. But after a certain point, when you keep getting that short run itis and you're not making your money, nobody should put up with that. You're hearing it here first. Nobody. You need to be a polite honey badger. Hey, Mr. Dispatch, if the dispatch won't give you a good enough answer, let me speak to your boss. Let me to be the, the, the planner. If the planner doesn't give you a good enough answer, let me speak to the, the, the driver manager. Some companies have a driver liaison. You need to let people know, listen, I want to run. Now, if you're not running, or if you're you know, staying on your clock for, for chasing attention pay, you're running out of hours before the end of the week to get your mileage, different subject. But if you're willing to run, if you're willing to stay off your clock at shippers and receivers and, and get your miles and get the chance, running weekends, nights, holidays, whatever it takes to get your mileage, and you're still not, not getting miles, and you're four, five, six months, eight months into the game, and you're getting short hop, short hop, short hop. I'm gonna call it short hop-itis for this video. You need to let someone know. Because if you never let somebody know, it's just as much your fault that it's not changing as it is theirs. Every company needs drivers right now. Every single company needs drivers. And if you're putting up with it and you're not voicing your concerns, you're doing yourself a disservice. Nobody else pays your bills except for you. Second story. Young lady gets into trucking. She's in the, in the, in the game now for about a year and a half, coming up on two years, I think. She goes and drives for a, uh, a longtime friend. He promises her this much money, this you know, this this kind of a schedule, blah blah blah. It's a person she's known. It's not not like it's just a blind company that she's going to interview with and talk to. It's a it's a gentleman she's known that has multiple trucks. She goes and runs, does everything she's asked, everything she's asked. Her pay is half of what she said it was going to be, or half of what he said it was going to be to her. Her pay is, and she's having a tough time getting her money. She asks for her check on Friday. It doesn't get till Saturday, sometimes Monday. 
you know, it's not what it's, it's half of what she said it was going to be or what he said it was going to be. And then also the job, and there's no shame in hustle, there's no shame in work, but the job is also turning out to be twice the work of what she was doing pulling different types of freight. Twice the work for half the money. It's about what that's about what her life became for the last two months. She told me, she's like, listen, I gotta leave. I can't do this. You said I came up here because you're a friend of mine to help. You said it's gonna be this, you said it's gonna be this much money, you said it's gonna be this kind of schedule. You said, you said, you said. I get here and it's not. And then you take a little bit of an attitude when I come looking for my check on Friday. I want to get paid. I want my money. I want my dollars. And you take an attitude with me. How is that right? Besides being misled, besides me changing my life to come and help you out, now, now she, of the two people I spoke to, she stood up for herself. She had a last, she had a check on uh, last, what is today? Today is Monday, Tuesday morning? Today is Tuesday morning. She had a check Friday. She took a plane out on Sunday. She told him, I can't do this. Everything you've told me is wrong. Everything you've told me is not correct. Everything you told me was to get me up here. I hustled, I worked, I did everything you asked me to do. I've made half of what I was told I was gonna make and I've worked twice as hard. I don't mind the working, but I'm not gonna work twice as hard to make half the money and let you keep on telling me it's gonna get better, it's gonna get better. I've been here two months. You gotta have a voice. She was polite, she was friendly, but she was a honey badger with me. And she told him, I've got, I've got to move on. I can't do this. I can't come up here and work these kind of hours, put this kind of hustle in to make half of what I was making. And I would have gone and taken a different job if I wouldn't have trusted you and known you and I believed what you told me and I get up here and you jack me. She didn't say that to him yet. She's waiting for the check to clear. The first gentleman, I said, you need to tell your, you need to tell your company. You need to tell them that you need to get your miles or you might need to make some other moves. When I came in the business, short hops, keep in mind now, companies, if any of you guys watch Jeffrey Likes videos, make sense trucking, same thing. Short hops, you can make really good money pulling short hops. So if you're pull, making really good money as a company giving a driver short hops and you're only paying them zip code to zip code miles and you're kind of using the excuse, well, we want to see how you run, we want to make sure that you're, you know, trainable, blah, blah, blah. I get that. But after two months or three months, if you're still on the short hop-itis schedule, you're not getting paid, you're not getting your miles, and it's not getting any better, you need to be the one to go listen. Mr. Company, whoever I'm speaking with, Mr. Company Manager, I, grown adult, with a CDL now, with now, in his case, I think seven months experience, if you can't give me the miles I need, let me know and I will vamoose, and I will go find a different path to get the miles I need. No company wants to lose drivers. They spend so much to get them right now. They're, they're, they're head hunting to get drivers. I'm still amazed at how companies treat the new drivers. I really am. But you need to out here not be a, not be a jerk about it, not lose your mind, not be unprofessional, not be threatening. You need to be very comfortable being a polite, professional honey badger and telling people, I need this or I need to make other decisions and moves because it's my income, it's my household, it's my family that it's affected. Don't blame the company. Don't don't cast dispersions on them. You don't, there's no reason to. All you got to do is tell them, listen, if you can't give me the miles, I need to make other moves. I have to. I don't tell anybody, and I haven't told anybody on my channel, to jump in the first year with the company. But if you're with the company and you're doing everything you can to get your miles and they're not getting you the miles as a CDL 18 wheel big rig truck driver, you need to let them know, I gotta make additional moves. I gotta I got move on. I've gotta find something else because my paychecks, my income is on me. If you guys can't do it, if I can't get any better runs, runs than this, and this gentleman was willing to stay out. He's willing to stay out for seven, seven days, 14 days at a stretch. He's still getting 15, 1,700 miles a week. Broke my heart to hear the story. But I hear it all the time. Because you're raised from the time that you're just a pup. The bell goes off, you go sit in your first room class. The bell goes off, you go to your second class. The bell goes off, you go to your third class. The bell goes off, you pick the, the herd goes to the fourth class. The bell goes off, you go to lunch. The bell goes off, you go home at night. 
you're raised to be in a group think mentality. You're raised in a group think culture. It's very tough for some people to go, hey, I have a voice. I need to exercise my voice. Out here in this game, out here in the business world in general, you can learn how to tell people whatever you want to tell them, but be a polite, professional honey badger. At the end of the day, my, my income, my business, my family is dependent on me. And if you can't help me meet those goals, please let me know. I might need to make some other moves. That's all you got to say. There's no, hey, if you don't give me more miles, I'm quitting. If you can't help me meet my goals of this many miles per week, this much income per week, if you can't do that, now again, some of the folks that had CDL school paid for, you're a little bit more limited than the average bear. I get that. You may have to bite the bowl a little bit more. But if you paid for your own school, you paid for your own training, and you're not getting the miles with the first company you're with, you need to look in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth this morning or tonight and go, hey, what have I said to handle that? What have I said professionally, politely, honey badgerishly to handle me getting what I need? They need to hear it. It might take you talking to three people. It might take you asking the question three days in a row. It might take you having to leave. As much as you don't want to bounce your first year, you want to try and stick if you can. You don't want to bounce your first two years if you can avoid it. But at the end of the day, the market, the market right now is on fire for drivers. And if you're qualified, if you have a good background, if you're going to pass the, 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 the pre-physical, pre-drug test, if you're going to have a good DMV record and you're not getting the miles and you're asking for the miles, you're asking to be run, you need to have a plan B lined up while you put the pressure on plan A. Have the plan B lined up to put the pressure on plan A. You need to because there's no reason to be out here doing the same job we're all doing, getting 15, 1700 miles a week when you're pulling dry van or pulling reefer. There's no reason other than since you haven't complained, since you haven't argued, since you I shouldn't say argued, since you haven't been a honey badger, they keep giving you the same thing because again, you're you're a cash cow for the company. You're running making them all kinds of money, and you're not making all kinds of money. But you're doing the same job as that guy who's running, making great money. It's just you're doing short hops. Just keep it in mind. Um, the last story really bothered me a lot. A friend, a friend, somebody you trust, somebody that you put your confidence in misleads you to get you to come drive for them and then it never gets any better than it almost becomes your fault you're even up there is how they start approaching you you know that what's well, going to take some time we well, didn't talk this going to take me time to make what i was told i was going to make you somebody has me to walk in the door run my face off and make the money and i'm not she had the courage to be polite and friendly and be a honey badger get in get on her plane and fly out of town and uh, it's not going to hurt her cdl but just understand out here, you have to have the voice. You, Mr. CDL driver, Mrs. CDL driver, Ms. or Mr. CDL driver, you have to be, have enough confidence in your ability and in your worth to the marketplace to go, you know what? I got a roll. I got a roll. I've asked and I've asked and I've asked. Nothing's happening. My paychecks are, are the same or lower. I'm not making what I need to take care of my family. I've got to do what's good for me and mine. There's no shame in that especially if you're a polite professional honey badger you can never be too polite too professional and too too honey badgers never never appreciate you guys watching i want to share that this morning before i finish my last two hours of a run before the before the wolverine takes over and uh just want to share that two two quick coaching calls just 180 out though one person handled it one person kind of put up with it for seven months and uh, we're going to do a debrief and see how it, how he worked it out. So, still a good day above ground driving an 18-wheel CDL big rig truck for the Red Viking Trucker. It is for me. I'll tell you that. I can't speak for anybody else. It is for me. I enjoy the business. I enjoy the game. I enjoy the hustle. I enjoy seeing different cities every day I wake up. I'm digging it. Um, two and a half years in, I'm digging it. Red Viking Trucker is out.